hello, hello, hello from France. Um, what's up, you crazy kids? How are we doing? Reen Alvarado joined. First one. Welcome to the show, Irene. Hello, Jill. Hello, young family anchoring in. Hello, Anne. Hello, Bunty Fox has stayed awake with me. It is 1 a.m. here in France. And I gotta tell you, Daddy's tired. Real tired. But, um, but I, uh, I've been wanting to come live with you guys uh, to wrap up May, and I've got some fun. I got a really cool guest that's going to join me here in a minute. Um, but before we get to my guest, uh, I wanted to a first off report about the team Palaha Chautauqua and how well you guys did. We raised over twelve thousand dollars. We have raised personally our team raised enough fresh water for 43,000 people that's a massive change that's incredible um so i am deeply grateful and hugely impressed and uh, i mean i'm just completely overwhelmed so um i'm gonna go live with some folks real quick i want to hear about your experiences uh going going uh on, on the run. Um, and then can is great. I'm, at, I'm having the time of my life here. I miss my family, my wife and my babies, but, uh, my men, my young men, uh, not so much babies anymore as they are grown ups, um, crushing it in their own right. Um, Lauren's joined. Hi Lauren. Um, him G rod, Mr. G rod. Mr. Grad just joined. Um, what's up, brother? We got a show coming out, Buried in Barstow. Some good acting takes place. Super8292 says, I'm handsome, but I'm in need of a haircut. You have no idea. Look at this. You have no idea what's going on. Um, my kids told me I should shave this. Um, all right. Everything's going good. Let's see. I want, I want to talk to somebody who ran. Somebody who ran. Who ran? If you ran, say hey. Let me see. I'm gonna... And nice hey. hat. I had to put my hat on. My hair's a mess. <laughs> I know. Look at me. I mean, we're all in. I know. Hello. We have matching hair, we, right? We can do it like this. Yeah. Hey, talk to me. How was your uh, How was your run? You know what? Perfect day to do the run. It was very overcast all day long here. So that's uh, an oddity here in SoCal, at least where I'm at. Um, it was good. Um, partially ran, partially walked because uh, I'm not a big runner, but I have been working out lately. So it was, it was good. And it was... Um, you know, it, 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 I was just thinking about, you know, the girls while I was running and walking and things like that. And it was just a beautiful experience just to thinking what they go through. And here I am just complaining that, oh, you know, it's tough to run. It's tough to walk. But they do this on a daily basis. So it just, uh, it, it, it stuck with me. And uh, I think motivation. that was important, yeah. to, yeah. important to, yeah. to realize. So, yeah, that's a sweet that's a sweet remembrance like it's a good motivation to think yeah we can if, you, if they can do it we can do it um well we did an incredible amount we i mean honestly forty three thousand people got fresh water from our efforts alone and that's and that's not including everybody else for the for the fundraiser overall so it was a big success and i'm very grateful for people like you and everybody who joined people who donated just super 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 grateful yeah, this was my third time, third year doing it, and it's it's an incredible experience. And just the fact that now you know we can sponsor a child to continuously go with them. Um, so she, this will be my third you, child. Right? Oh, very cool! So every time you run, you you adopt the child that you get sponsored or that you get the bib for. <laughs> I, I'm so uh, yeah I, I'm the kind of a sucker for those kind of things it's just like in this last one she was like a little one-year-old and she was just so beautiful and I'm just like why if I could help her all the way through and so I've, I've got a long time with her some of the other ones not so so much but 
you know, this one, definitely. I was just like, oh, I was just like, I saw the face and that was it. I'm good. <laughs> hey, question for you. For World Vision, how much does it cost to sponsor a child a month? For World Vision? Mm -hmm. See, see, I, I don't, I just put in a flat fee uh, of a fifty dollar donation. Oh, and that takes care of the kid for the year. No, I, I do it. I do it monthly. <laughs> okay, you do fifty, uh, fifty, for three kids. No, it, it, no. See, kid. what I do is, it, yeah, it's kind of tricky. So I do a monthly for each one of them. So yeah. it's just like. Um, it's part of like my tithing. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So it's like 50 for each one of them. Wow. So you do 150 a month. That's a big, big deal. So that's yeah, a, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. So Amanda's saying that it's $30 a month to sponsor a child. So you could do it that yeah, way too. It's, yeah. No, I just like to do a flat, you know, any, at this stage of my career and my life i can afford that so you know it, whatever extra you know because it, it's not you. just you know anything i can do anything i didn't do right now my kids are grown right you know and yeah. it's time to it's time to give back so because you oh. know I, i'm very fortunate in my life to you know live in a place where i have clean water a house to live in and a good job so you know it's all good yeah. You know, I always say this, if you've got the time, give it. If you get the money, give it. It's like in one of the, in, in, you know, it's, it's whatever you have an excess of. If you have, if you can afford time, that's always, that's equal to money. If you've got a bunch of money laying around and, and you can afford to do it and go for it. Right. Um, it's, a, you know, resources aren't, they don't always have to mean coin. Um, um, Oops, my little thing is going, it's one o'clock here, and I've been walking around France, going to movies, and seeing, and I gotta be honest with you, like, I am, I am wiped out, I'm so tired, but we are, uh, we're doing this thing, and we're got a fun show headed up tonight, so I'm gonna let you go. And okay. Matt, but he's, he's, I'm calling him my friend, because uh, he's willing to, um, um, He's willing to uh, join me, and that's a friendly gesture. Um, let me ask. Let me see if. Let me see if this guy will join me real quick. Let me see if this guy will join me. All right, Steph, get yourself ready. I love that he's already got his new icon as um, the can red carpet. Steph, are you out there? There we go. All right. He's probably like, what are you doing, bro? It's 1 a.m. in the morning. I'm not ready to join you live on Instagram. Um, we have been, uh, we had our, our, our big uh, screening, I say big, it was a sweet little thing at the American Pavilion today. It was a screening for the Emerging Filmmaker Showcase uh, for the 20, for the films that were accepted in 2021. And just to be here at the Cannes Film Festival and have a showing with fellow filmmakers was really, truly uh, an amazing experience today and super, um, I was really nervous actually. I don't know why, if it's been screened before and it's, you know, it's one film festival it was doing its thing um but it was uh really cool we got to do a q a afterwards and get up and talk and um it felt like it was a it, it feel, and, and i guess if you've ever been to can or if you know much about it it's a 75 year old film festival and it is very cinema heavy it's like filmmakers not making like popcorn movies but like cinema um and i've seen some really incredible stuff god's creatures is one uh, Revoir Paris is one that's amazing about trauma and about he, the memory of trauma and how you don't remember, you have physical flashbacks and, and um, the way that you heal from that was she, she kind of showed how someone can heal by piecing all the pieces together, almost like solving a puzzle. Um, that was amazing. There's a movie called 
Lactain Montagne, it's uh, the Octo Montagne, the Eight Mountains. It's an Italian film about friendship, brotherhood. And you don't see a lot of just, you know, like uh, films about, about two young boys who just have a deep friendship um, and just a brotherhood, uh, a platonic, it was a great story about friendship and fatherhood and brotherhood. And it's, it was this big epic movie kind of went from their childhood all the way to adulthood. And uh, it was beautiful. It was a really beautiful movie. Um, all right. Enough of me yapping. I have a guest that I'm going to bring on and let me see if I can find him out there. His name is Andy. And I discovered Andy here on Instagram. It was Easter, and he uh, he posted something. He plays the banjo. He's a fantastic musician, and he had this little fox kind of came and sat and listened, and and there was a sunshine behind him. And uh, I kind of did a deep dive into his page. So I don't know him other than through this Instagram thing, which I've learned, guys. There's a word for this is a very interesting word, which we'll get into next season about friendships that happen over social media and they're called parasocial relationships. Um, because you feel familiar and you feel like you're knowing people because it's all, but it's this weird thing that you don't really know the people that you're engaging with because it's, it's a paranormal relationship or parasocial relationship. Um, anyway, so, so, uh, I asked Andy if he'd come on and just jam with me for a while. So tonight, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that, or today for you guys. Um, let's see if he's still out there in the world. All right, Andy Thorne, I've invited you. I'm looking forward to meeting you. <laughs> what's up, brother? Hey, what's going on? How you doing, man? I'm here with you parasocially. Parasocially. So my name is Chris. It is a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for joining me on the Palaha Chautauqua. This is a little show I've been doing like since the pandemic began. And it's been this wild little social experiment of just getting people to come on, tell their story. And it was sort of in reaction to the pandemic and to quarantine and to death that was all, you know, all the stuff that was happening. And I wanted to just create a community where people could tell their stories, sort of encourage one another and really celebrate life. And <clears throat> what's interesting about it is that it, it kind of stuck. It became this thing that people, they tune in every week, they talk, they become, there are para, para, parasocial relationships that have actually turned into real life relationships and friendships. People have you know, gone offline and they've, actually met each other in real life they have a game night they like it's a pretty cool thing um and it's also kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone and forced me to to sort of i don't know like try to find other people who are doing cool stuff and i found your page and i think what you're doing is pretty awesome and you do all sorts of stuff so do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to people and and um and then i'll let you you just start rocking and rolling if you want um, well, yeah, my name's Andy Thorne, and I am a banjo player, a professional banjo player, which is kind of hilarious to be. <laughs> but uh, I don't. I think a lot of people might not realize that when they see the fox video. They're like, oh, this is some dude who was playing banjo to a fox. But I do play banjo for a living, somehow still, after 20-some years of doing it. Crazy. But yeah, during the pandemic, we were finally home every day. And we became friends with the fox and realized he likes hearing banjo music. That's the kind of the... Cool. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. It was really... I mean, we were some of the luckiest people during the pandemic because we live on a couple acres up in the mountains above Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, and I was going to had... ask. You guys are... Yeah, you we're guys, up... You're outside of Boulder? Is that where it is? Because it's beautiful. Wherever you guys live, it's gorgeous. It looks awesome. It's so beautiful. We're about 2,000 feet above Boulder, Colorado. And four miles, you go up 2,000 feet. So it's very, very steep. And uh, we just love it. We're so lucky we ended up up there. And yeah, that's, that's the good life. So we became friends with the fox and all the other animals that live nearby. 
but it turned out the fox was the only one that likes banjo music so that's really that, cool that's, that's really it, cool and like the, he listens he comes and listens to you like he like comes and literally just hangs out and listens to you jam he really does and it's super awesome um he it's it's kind of funny he'll just make his rounds through the whole neighborhood like other neighbors see him at their houses too and and we'll see him walk by some days he'll just sort of walk by and not pay attention to us but certain days maybe i'll be out there playing on the deck and he'll take notice and he'll hear it and come over or sometimes if he's there i'll just go out with the banjo and see if he feels like coming down and hearing a song. And sometimes he does. It's the best. That's really cool. All right, question for you. You said you've been playing banjo for 20 years. Why yeah. the banjo? What, I mean, that's a hard instrument. I tried learning it in college, and I was like, forget this, man, because my fingers didn't do the picking. Um, I, I'm from North Carolina originally, so I was into music as a kid. And I happened to see a banjo at my neighbor's yard sale when I was 12 years old. And that's how I ever ended up being into banjo. I was never like, oh, I have to get a banjo. I really want to play banjo. I just saw it at the yard sale. And I kind of, I was like, man, maybe this would be a fun instrument to try. And it was only a $50 banjo. So that so made it before, like, So you didn't know guitar. Like you didn't, were you playing guitar first? Or did you literally learn on the banjo? I was playing some guitar. And I think I had taken some piano lessons. Okay. But then I had banjo laying around and I I slowly got more into it than the other instruments I had around because less people played it and it seemed kind of like more of a special thing if I played banjo and then I actually did jazz guitar through high school and college but it was kind of the same deal there were so many other guitar players and not that many other banjo players so that's yeah, why I ended up yeah where did you go to college did you go out to uh, were you at Boulder I went to UNC Chapel Hill Oh, you did? Okay. Right where I grew up. I grew up in Durham, went to college 10 minutes away. That's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, that's cool, my kid. And you're in Nashville right now. Is that is that correct? Are you recording right something? Right now. You guys doing something? Yeah. Over Salmon is on tour, and we're in Nashville the next few days in the studio. Okay. And, and repeat that. Leftover Salmon is the name of your band? Leftover Salmon. Yep. Okay. Can people, uh, can they find you on like Apple or how do they find you? Like if they want to buy an yeah. album. We're everywhere. We're, you know, leftoversalmon.com. We're on all your streaming sites. And uh, the band's been around for 32 years and I've wow. been in it for 20 years. So they're kind of a legendary Colorado band. So it's really cool to be in it. I That's love these guys. Yeah. That feels like you're a part of something. That's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's super cool. Now, question, the question that every banjo player gets asked is, I mean, maybe not every, but have you ever, have, has uh, Steve Martin ever crossed your path? Have you ever gotten a chance to jam with Steve Martin? Not jam, but I have met him and it was the best. Um, he, his backing band when he started uh, his, like doing his music shows a few years ago are my friends, the Steve Canyon Rangers. Yeah. So I've known them forever from college, and I got to meet him through them, and he was really nice, actually. Yeah, he's a pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, he's he's interesting. His movie uh, "L.A. Story" was one of the films that inspired me to to do what I do. I remember seeing that as a young guy, and was just like, man, that's that's a cool way to tell stories. Like, film is cool, to, a cool way to tell stories. Um, I don't wanna... even know that one. I'm gonna check it oh, out. Oh, you got it, sure. dude! You got to check it out. L.A. Story. It was his answer to Annie Hall. So Woody Allen did Annie Hall, and Steve Martin was like, "You know what? I'm gonna tell a story about L.A. and a love story about L.A." And he said it in uh, it has Inya music or Anya or whatever. Inya, Inya, Anya, Inya. Remember that woman yeah. back in the late '80s? For sure. Um, Sail away. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and you and you how you have a kid? How many kids do you have? I have one kid, a 14 month old. Yeah, I saw pictures. So you got a little little baby, a little yeah. boy or girl. Or I'm on dad vacation. I'm like, wow, I get to wake up every day and have nothing to do for the first couple hours. That's a little different, you know? Yeah, you're not waking up at five, changing diapers and like letting right. the baby like, yeah, yeah. Lunch, yeah. <laughs> hang out with you in the early morning. Um, well, would you, okay, and then I have a, you know what? Why don't you play something? And then I got a question okay. 
for your son. I want to know about your Sunday stuff that you do. I'm just curious about that. And, and uh, okay. I'll let you do your thing. Take it away. Okay. Let's see if it's in tune. Okay. We've been in Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, Seaverville, Tennessee, or something. A town I've never been to before. Going to my open tuning here. I like. It. It's such a great music and it's such a good sound. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, that's, it's, I, in my band, I do more picking with finger picks on and it's a lot flashier and stuff. So at home, I'm playing claw hammer on the deck and the way this Fox video is kind of blown up, it's inspired me to do a lot more claw hammer, which is what I was just doing. Explain that. What is claw hammer? Uh, what is that? Um, check out this crazy nail I have. I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> and then yeah. It's, yeah. I need to be careful now. It looks, it looks like you like, forgot. <laughs> yeah. So I use the, with claw hammer, you use your fingers, you know, you do more afraid. Okay. So it's a broader sound versus the real specific plucking. Yeah, but, and it's, it's a little bit less flashy than the finger picking that you normally see in bluegrass. Okay. Um, I've been really since these Fox videos blew up because I realized how much people love it and I love it too. And uh, so, yeah, it's just fun it, to be doing that. You know, it touched me in a way that like when you, like it was so cool because, you know, this little Fox just rolls up and sits down and listens to you play. And, and, and it was, I posted it, I reposted it on Easter because, Thank you know, you. I was thinking about the lion and the lamb and there's a, there's a point in time where like, you know, we're supposed to get along, you know? And instead of fearing things, and instead of, and you think about foxes being scary or whatever, I think some people do or might. And, and here was this little creature looking pretty gentle and music is, it's beautiful. I mean, it's it's how we, it's how our souls sing. Um, my kid, my kid plays. My kid, we're actually heading to Nashville. Um, he's gonna do a little, he's got a gig uh, in part of the CMA Fest on June 10th. Um, I'd love to get you guys together, man. He's a 17 year old kid. He's been songwriting, but it's when you start singing and when you start like letting your soul out that way, it's magical. And what's cool is how the audience, it's a, it's a direct line to the audience in their heart. Um, now you're doing something on Sundays and I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm, my, my take is that you're not particularly religious, like from, from what I understand, but yeah. you have found gospel music You've you found a love for it. Maybe maybe growing up in the South, you just it's a part of the Bible Belt, and you just kind of grow up with it. So it's also like traditionally a part of your story. But but you do this thing on Sundays, and you're playing like you find it. You'll take a song, and you'll just jam out with it. Right. What was it? What? How did that? How did you get started with that? Um. Well, I always love getting up for sunrise at my house because we have an epic sunrise view. And a few a few months ago, I think it was a Sunday morning, I was going out there to film my sunrise banjo. And I was like, I think I should do a gospel tune because it's Sunday morning. And that's what makes sense. At bluegrass festivals on Sundays, there's always a gospel set. And uh, I'm not particularly religious, but I did grow up going to church and my parents were religious and my grandparents. So I definitely know a lot of that gospel material through them yeah, and through my Stuff. And bluegrass has a huge gospel connection. There's all this gospel bluegrass. So I started playing like little instrumental versions of 
of the gospel tunes and people really dug it. And I realized it was a. <laughs> say, say, that, say that again. I realized it was. Uh, say... um, I realized slowly that there were a lot of religious people that were into these gospel things. And uh, I'm not particularly religious, so it got a little interesting. And sometimes when I look at the words of these gospel songs, I find some of the things problematic. As you know, when you read right. them from. Right. Uh, today's perspective yeah, you're like, but that a minute so i started yeah. do I, yeah, a couple of times, like i don't want to talk junk about gospel music because i love it so it's just fun to like enjoy the melodies and what how they make you feel and sharing them on sunday sunrises is really special yeah and i read that post you're like i think you did one where you were talking about the words and then the following week you're like you know what like I'm not going to get into it. I'm I'm going to leave yeah. it out. Is the truth of the matter is the music is beautiful and it makes you feel a certain way. Um, if you had to say you had a favorite favorite one, what would you? What song would you pick? Gospel. Let's say gospel, and then we'll and then we'll go back and then we'll say favorite song overall. Like, what's your most fun plan? Um, I really like like where the soul of a man never dies. That one Tony Rice and Ricky Skaggs did on Skaggs and Rice. It's just an amazing. If you haven't heard that record, check that out for sure. Skaggs would you mind? And Rice. Uh, would you mind playing it? Yeah, sure. I'll stand up. I'm in this little room in the studio. <laughs> Um, and what's your favorite, like, if you had a favorite song, like every time you play it, you're just like, yup, here it comes. And your soul just starts to sing. Like, what's, uh, what would you call that? Gosh, I don't know. I really just like making up little melodies, like in this tuning, this is an open tuning on banjo. So it's really easy to make stuff up. And I just really enjoy making up little melodies and seeing where that goes. But I, I really like the old stuff, you know? The old bluegrass I still have a love for. Yeah. Although yeah. the band is more of a jam band. <laughs> Gives us more freedom to explore, which is fun. To go, yeah. For, for those of you who don't know what a jam band is, it's like where you basically take one song and you meld it. it as you're playing, you kind of meld it into another song. And it's yeah. like Fish, Grateful Dead. Right. There's a great long yeah. history of American music. Wow, that's pretty wild. Um, I'm yeah, man. This. Yeah, is your little phone dying? I am in the back corner of a music studio in Nashville, Tennessee, right now. <laughs> Great, <laughs> we're, we're we're here for a few days, and it's just exciting to be in Nashville. You know, that's cool. Do you get out there often? Is this a, a rare occurrence? <laughs> We really don't get here that often. We play here about once a year. We've played the Ryman. We've played all the legendary places, but this time we're playing a really small place, the Station Inn, and that's as legendary as anywhere. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun four days here. We're really excited. That's really cool, man. That's cool. I love it that yeah. you're like, you probably got your band out in the other room, and like, you're like, I got to go do this thing real quick. I'll be right back. You're like, what are you doing? You're like, I don't know. I was like, <laughs> I don't know this guy, but he seems really, really cool, and uh, he's an actor that I think we should respect, and I'm yeah. excited to meet him. So there you go. We're having fun. And I'm sure, dude, it is 1.30 a.m., and I have been going to, I have been seeing... I don't know if you've ever been to a film festival, but it's reminding me a lot of like when I when I when I was in high school, I had a buddy Mike Beck, and he used to he still does. He follows fish all over the country, and nice. it's like a weekend of music, and you just listen to music all weekend long, and you socialize, and you're just like constantly moving and grooving. 
well, that's what a film festival is, but you just, you watch movies and then in the intern, you hang out and you meet other filmmakers and you meet, you know, distributors and, and people who might be interested in, in financing your films. And so you're just like, and it's been a week of really awesome experiences, but I've never been, I'm like bone tired right now. So forgive me. Yeah. I'm sorry that we're meeting this way. You're on tour. Originally, yeah, originally I think we were both going to be on the same. You would be about an hour later than me. It's been four o'clock, but it's like one thirty in the morning. Um, oh, where are you? Where is Cannes Film I'm Festival? I'm in France, bro. I'm like, I'm coming. Oh, my I'm God. France, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay, I did not me, realize that. Get, yeah, let me show, let me see if I can show you. Um, let me say something real quick. Uh, hang on one second. Yeah. Um. All right, this is where we are. All right, can you see me still? I think, oh yeah, wow, look at that. So this is like, is there's the, the Riviera there. And then oh, the, wow. fil the, the festival is like this area here and there's the red carpet and there's this cool, anyway, it's like, it's, yeah, it's late. It's busy, and people are just still. I mean, look at that. The traffic's still going crazy. Wow. You know, it's um, it's a thing. It's a real thing. Wow. It's a seventy-five-year-old film festival, and um, yeah, just to be a part of it is like. I mean, it's like I'm totally overwhelmed by it, but amazing, dude. You got to dress up in tuxedos to go see movies at night, and it's like a little. It's fun. That sounds super fun. Um. Well, I don't want to keep you forever, and I do want you to come back if you have it. But before you leave, do you mind playing like one more song for everybody? Sure, man. I... Let's see. How about a little quicker one? see you in concert okay so andy thorne leftover salmon go yeah. to apple anywhere streams buy it get the music because you can hear it and, and it's on and do you ever do anything solo like do you ever do solo projects where it's just you playing i band? do i'm actually uh finishing up a solo project of all these instrumentals that i play to the fox oh really so i'm super excited about that it's going to be called songs of the sunrise fox Oh, that's and uh, it's all those claw hammer tunes I play. It's really, really good. I'm finishing it up right now, so I'm excited. Okay, when will that be available? I think in a couple months. If they go to my website, andythornmusic.com, they can stay in touch with what I'm up to. There's a whole bunch of videos there and links to all my music. Okay, cool. So, so say that again. Andythornmusic.com. Andythornmusic.com. And here on yes, Instagram, sir. you are... Your thorn pipe, thorn pipe. Okay, so give like them a follow. Pipe with a T. You know, yeah. it's like it, you know, we live in we live in a world where, uh, you know, in particularly like since the pandemic, a lot of dark, a lot of dark shit. <laughs> There's a lot of dark shit out there, and it's a depressing. Yeah, there so is. Media can be very depressing and cause anxiety. Um, you happen to, I think, have found a really cool way to be encouraging to people. It, because of the sunrise, your videos are always bright and filled with light and nature and beautiful music. And you got foxes coming and sitting down and like, 
it's a really cool, inspiring, uh, it's a fun page to follow. So I highly recommend if you guys are watching this, go give him a follow, bump those numbers up. And then when your album comes out, grab that too. Yeah, I hope all these people that love the Fox stuff will buy the album. That would be awesome. Would be and cool. I hope to get this shit in a TV show or movie someday. I'm like, it's the perfect background music for whatever is going on on your TV. I'm like, so now I'm trying to pitch this to everybody I can. I know a guy who might be able to help you do that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You might be uh, in that world. That's pretty I might, awesome. I might know a few people that can help you. Um, I'd actually, I'm, I'm going to hit you up at some point because my kid, like, uh, uh, I'm actually, I'll, I'm going to do, I'm going to send you one of his little songs at some point I'll, 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 because he, uh, it's a, he loves, um, you know, like Ryan Adams, Jason Isbell. He's a kid from California. Yeah. Got a real soul for sort of alt country music. Um, and he loves the mandolin and he loves the slide guitar and there's, and it's just, it's interesting music. And I think that there's a lot of cool opportunities for cross pollination. It wasn't ever the intention, but the more I got to know your music, the more I was just like, oh, that'd be cool. If like, you know, at some point. Um, Love but, the jam. Uh, if you guys are ever in Boulder, Colorado, come up to the house and see the view in person. Would love that, man. And and the, awesome. the invitation is for you. If you're ever in LA playing, let me know, and we'll cool. come out and we'll support you in mass, and we will. Uh, for sure, yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. And then I'll tell you what, dude. I go on hiatus for the summer. I don't do this thing for the summer, but when I come back in September, maybe by that time your album will be ready. And if you want to come yeah. on and we can do another round of this, uh, it won't. It won't that be. That would be really great. Late for me, and and um, maybe we can actually do it from from Boulder, Colorado, and. Right. Uh, people can see Cooler when I'm standing there with the view. So uh, it's so funny because usually, yeah, that. usually you're just wide open expanses. And like you said, you're 2,000 feet up. So, I mean, I've literally watched your videos and you can look and see like 30 miles probably or 100 miles. How far can you see forever? Right? On a clear day, I don't, I don't know how many miles, but probably a couple hundred. I mean, honestly, like you can just see forever from your, from your POV. Yeah. It does look. We're uh, very lucky to live there. We love it. Yeah pretty special it's you your wife and you be um yeah all right brother good to meet you. thanks for having me and thanks for staying up late tonight of course man yeah i know he's worth it 100 percent um i'm gonna let you go i'm gonna sign off but i'll see you again good luck at the film fest man thanks brother appreciate talk you, to you soon all right bye man thank you bye okay there you go. That's how you do it, people. That is how you make a friend. Um, guys, thanks for watching the show tonight. Thanks for uh, sticking with me, even though I am uh, literally. I look like a. I look like a. I look like somebody who would go to a jam band concert and just spend all day in a in a foggy haze of. <laughs> I'm talking about marijuana. Um, all right, guys, I'm signing off. I'll see you next week. I got another friend joining me next week. Uh, his name is Scott Jones. Where did my batteries? Hold on, my battery is doing it. Two. Hold on, I gotta get it going. On. All right. Uh, next week, Scott Jones is gonna join me live. You guys met him during the pandemic. We uh, talked about his daughters and barbecue and food and all things. Um, and he's gonna join me, and we're gonna do a wine tasting next week and get you guys ready for summer. He's gonna have some cool suggestions. And then, uh, and then a graduation show, and that will be me signing off for the summer. Uh, so enjoy your week. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.